Thank you very, very much. Welcome to Metal Gear Solid 2, and this is the substance version of the game, the expansion pack to Sons of Liberty. I'm D Limes 13. I have on my couch behind me Joseph Joestar 316, Metal Glen Solid, and Apache Smash via remote. So let's just get into the run. We are going to load a New Game Plus save. It'll enable us to skip a two and a half minute cutscene uh, about 10 minutes into the run, which we'll point that out. We're going to play on European Extreme Difficulty, the highest and hardest difficulty in the game. We're going to go for Big Boss Rank, which is basically rank one. No kills, no saves, no alerts, no rations used, all that fun stuff. And then we're going to play on something that's not really played on too much Game Over of Discovered, and that's just how it sounds. You get spotted by the enemy, you get spotted by a camera, whatever. It just, the game just ends and you have to take a continue. So, time is, excuse me, time is going to begin when I select Game Over if discovered, and then these guys will take you through the first couple minutes of the run. In three, two, two one, one, go. Go! Good luck. Appreciate it. Alrighty, so we get to play the first few minutes here on the tanker as Solid Snake, a couple years after Shot of Moses incident, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, it's raining here, and normally on lower difficulties, we're going to head off to the right, go up some stairs, but in European, extreme and extreme, uh, we're just going to go to the left here, head up some stairs, or not up some stairs, excuse me, we're going to go to the left on the side of the wall, just past this guard. There's no footsteps on this game, right, Joe? Well, not quite, but, you know, it's, they, they can't hear anything anyway, but uh, I guess a few of the things you may notice on screen other than just, you know, the life bar and the, the weapon you see in the lower right corner is a running timer in the upper left, which is just an uh, in-game timer that we use just for our reference, and the turbo-enabled text that you see pop up along with a little bloop, bloop. Um, it's a built-in uh, feature for MGS2 PC, which allows us to enable Turbo to skip through codec lines faster, cutscenes faster, and also not break our wrists when resisting a certain torture at the end of the game. Yeah, that was something we, we voted on a couple of years ago now. Um, just for European Extreme mostly, people were like, I don't want to do the mashing section, which is insanely long on European Extreme for this game. Unlike the HD collection they later released, but they shortened it very much. Yeah, so Dean Lives is just going to wait a little bit here. He's going to do a sneeze buffer. I know, it's not something you often hear, but it's just for timing. Uh, so coming up is going to be the first boss fight uh, with Olga. It's also the first element of RNG, which we're going to see either, you know, a left side spawn Olga or a right side spawn. So let's see. Oh, bad Oop. luck. Oh, right side right. Olga. So okay. that's... That's not the worst, but, you know, ideally for European Extreme, we want to get a left side Olga. It's just random. Um, but it gives us a chance to do what we call an Olga loop, where she kind of hunches down in the back there, I've and then you can just repeat headshots. I, I grew up on the battlefield. Okay. Conflict and victory were my parents. The unit is my... <gasps> We've shared everything. I'm All a little jealous. She's better at that uh, USP oh. than we ever will be, because we're going to take it from her here after we knock her out. And, and that's usually my point in the run where I'm like, okay, I get through this fight. I'm like, huh, okay, things get a little bit easier. The first couple minutes are always a little scary just because a lot of these boss fights are one-hit kill. Yeah, and I guess maybe that's one thing we could talk about is, you know, what makes European Extreme unique from the others. And one of being, yeah, most boss fights will kill us in one to two hits, depending on which fight it is. Uh, it's three gunshots from guards. Um, you know, you know, to lose your life bar, and then there are no rations in the game on European Extreme. Absolutely none, which is kind of scary when you think about it, but... Um, yeah, we don't need them. Yeah, we don't need them. They're just, I don't know, they're there with us in spirit. Snake doesn't get hungry, it's fine. Yeah, well, I mean, I heard he doesn't like the rations anyway, but that could just be me. Uh, so what D-Limes is going to do here, he's going to shoot at that window to make this guard turn, because again, we're running on game over of Discover, meaning, you know, if he gets spotted, that's it. It's a game over. There's not this delay where they try to call in for backup. You can either try to neutralize them, shoot the radio. We can't do any of that, really. So he's just going to play it safe here, just put them both to sleep. Ready. All right, so this room can be a little bit tricky, especially on Game Over Discovered. You got to move through this room fairly quickly. I'm going to roll down and 
uh, trank this guard. It's called a trank roll. They'll be instantly put to sleep if we roll into them. Otherwise, if we just shoot them, then it could take a certain amount of time to go to sleep depending on where we hit them. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this guard. And then it'll lure another guard down here. What's that? Which, that guard will spot the guard asleep. I will hold this guard up. Freeze. And then just for safety, I'm going to turn around and, and trank him. And then he'll eventually go to sleep after his radio call. That way he doesn't come back up here and hear my gunshots. And then I waited there to skip a cutscene and avoid another guard coming out of the room behind me. And then I can just shoot all these sensors in peace and be on my way. Very nice. You don't want to, you got to be careful with some of those sensors, especially the first and the last one. Uh, I know, Joe, I know you've shot them. I know I've shot them. Yeah, it's almost like a rite of, pa right of passage with this game as uh, everybody blows up the tanker sooner or later. I, I think even on Very Easy where there's just one of those things, I think every single person who's ever speed ran this game, especially repeatedly, they've blown up the tanker. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to do a little punch, punch, kick buffer here to wait for this jamming dude to walk by. And then we're just going to run to the door while this other guy is asleep. Easy peasy. Yeah, that guy with the, you know, playing the music uh, with his headphones or whatever, he's my favorite guard in the tanker. That's me at work, too. <laughs> I like the one that isn't wearing pants. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> All right, guard rush, you guys right. want to explain this? So there's a few guards that we're going to take care of. Uh, mostly we're going to shoot the one here and just go for as many trank headshots as we can. Since we are going for big boss, we are trying not to kill any of them, I think. Yes. We'll see. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they're just going to come in from the right. They're all going to come from the same direction. Uh, there's going to be one that's going to hang out here on the right. Sometimes he might pop out, but not pop his head out. He's going to shoot out the lights here so that we can't see. Ooh, we just nice. turned the brightness You up, were very lucky to not get yeah. hit there. Boom. 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 Oh, no, I killed him. What are you doing, man? <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't see him kill him. I mean, it just ended too quick. <laughs> are you sure? I'm pretty sure. <sighs> Yeah, so, the game only counts guards as, as a kill. Um, after, it takes like a second or so after they die. As long as you kill those three guards fast enough at the end of the room, they don't count as kills. Uh, this is ladder skip. We equip the camera when we um, are getting on the ladder, which makes the game go a bit strange. Um, the game's not sure where you actually are, so there's like a, a strict button combination that we do, and it allows us to completely skip the ladder. At the moment... All right, hold two. We're just going to turn and switch cameras here so that they turn the other way, and then we're going to hold up this guy, and then hold up this guy by switching weapons on the previous, and hold up the final guard. you got to do that quick enough, because if you're not quick enough, that final guard we held up, he might turn around, and we really don't want that. And we're going to take some pictures here. One, two, boom. And two spots, so we only need to stand in two positions as long as you are on 16 by 9. It's a lot easier. Um, Limes, I, I think we're supposed to take a photo of the Marines logo. No, yeah, we, we, we did. We did. I, it was supposed to clear to me. I definitely saw it. Uh, I must have blinked then because it's hard to do that in two spots. It's on the side. See? Otacon says so. We got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw it. Otacon has spoken. We, the Marines. And that, that is Tanker. tanker. Yeah, very, very nicely very done. Clean, yeah. Section. Well done. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy your break. And I, come I think most myself. importantly, Joe, we so, need to save boss. So this That's is right. the plant section we'll be playing as Raiden for the rest of the game. The first few minutes is just kind of tutorial stuff and just getting up to the roof, so this would be a, a good time for donations. Alrighty then. We got $40 from Ska Melee. Here together, but hidden in a box for stealth. Good luck, D-Limes 13. We also got $15 from, oh, excuse me if I butcher this name, Nievelugen. Super hype for the Mario 64 run. Guys, let's make it happen. Absolutely. Let's do it. Got $25 from Arthur E. Feels great to become a first-time donator rather than a no-timer. Thank you again to GDQ for all the amazing content over this past week and the backlog of VODs to come. Much love from Alaska, less than three. Keep going? Oh, yeah, I can do a couple more. All right. We have $50 from Arrowbreaker. Let's see if I can get three out of three Limericks red. All righty. 
Hmm. <clears throat> At SGDQ, here we are. Now let's simply collect stars. I'm donating now in hopes that somehow we'll unlock this Mario Kart. Hundred yeah, dollar? Oh, we're good. Oh, I was just about okay. to say that. Uh, yeah, that guard on the lower right. Yeah, he's okay. Fine. Just nice little chop to uh, <laughs> the lower lumbar section. Probably L three, L four. I don't know. I'm not much of a doctor. And you in the air. All right, making our way up to the roof now. So our first mission is we're going to uh, meet a Navy SEAL called Pliskin, um, and then just go from there. So we got time for a couple more donations. Alrighty, we got two hundred dollars from Arzen. Always love GDQ. Keep up the good work. Hundred dollars from Anonymous. This past week has been so much fun, and the runs have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, GDQ. I've loved the hybrid format and being able to help Doctors Without Borders again with everything they do. Less than three. All right, this room I consider it hard because I usually go to the bottom for all my speed runs, but on Game Over, I've discovered you have to go up top. Okay, that, that, that was the, the dumb part. I just, I hate going up top for whatever reason. This, the camera angle's weird, and getting through that guard without getting spotted, I, I clench every time. The, the movement has to be absolutely perfect, and the, and the guards can see so far on this difficulty that if you're a little bit off, they can catch you, um, kind of as you run towards the door. Wait a minute, that, that, that guy looks familiar there, Glenn Apache. I mean, it, it kind of looked like Snake, sounded like Snake, even though we didn't hear him talk yet, but I get this feeling we've seen him before. Nah. I, I don't know what you're talking about, no Joe. I've never, seen, never Joe, seen that Joe, person in my life. It, it, it must be just me. You're crazy. It's just you. So now we are off to meet our good friend Peter Stillman, and normally if you play a new game, then we have a, I, I don't know, I think it's like six-minute cutscene or something that we skip. But we're playing a new at game plus, four. so we get to skip it. You think it's four? Yeah, four minutes. Four? Oh. I thought it was 5.30. Mm. Who, nobody knows. And nobody knows. Perhaps yeah. no one knows. Not even once. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be informed that there are bombs all over the plant, and despite our limited experience, we're going to have to go and defuse them. Um, fortunately, he teaches us how, and he gives us a little bottle of... Febreze or something that we have to spray onto all the bombs. <laughs> so now we're just going to go through the plant uh, in a big circle and defuse all the bombs. Freeze. We have a sensor that will kind of show us where they are, um, but their positions are static on each difficulty, so we, we already know where they all are. Uh, at least, at least I hope. Oh, God. <laughs> Stupid cipher. <laughs> it's too early for this line. Oof. Come on. If that had been it, like half a second later, uh, lines would have been spotted there. First one's behind door number one. Um, certain positions give you a faster defuse. Um, that bomb, you'll always get a fast defuse on. So certain ones, we can move ourselves into a better position to defuse them quicker. And some you can't. Nice door prone. Thanks. So this bridge, I have to wait a little bit till this guard turns, and then for safety, I'm just gonna go up to him and punch, punch, kick him. Yeah, you know, early on in the big show, we actually do have to be rather stealthier than we would normally be because we actually have to go around and pick up the M9. We don't just get it handed to us like we do on the tanker. Uh, it's in strut F, so we have to stealth one more strut, and then we have, then we can go get it. Yeah, the M9 is a very powerful weapon in this game, especially on a difficulty in a mode like this. It is. A godsend for sure. It's it's definitely your most full reliable, if you will. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna wait for this guard to turn for safety, defuse this bomb, and then I'll hold him up and go into him Freeze. like that. See you later. Grab these chaff grenades, and off we go. Smooth roof. It's really great that they can't hear the footsteps or the sound if you spray and weapon them. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for this guard to turn. You can. Um, attack him from behind uh, in the groin, but I'd, I'd rather not, because if I miss and he turns around, that's a continue. So I'll just eat a couple seconds. And then there's also the possibility where if you are even a little bit off on this in this room, he might wake up and knocked out cards in this game, wake up really quickly, especially on this difficulty. 
We're actually diffusing the bomb from the back there. So normally you're, sp you're supposed to crawl all the way around, but there's a, a really specific spot you can go to and diffuse the bomb from the back. It's fine, Fabrice reaches very far away. Yeah, and then one of the things that you saw D-Limes do there while in the pump room was he was crawling and then just instantly getting back up from uh, equipping, unequipping. It's what we call the coolant rise. It's just an animation cancel that in a room like that where time is of the essence uh, for that guard's patrol, um, it does save you time and just gives you that little bit of extra, you know, uh, buffer just to be able to get out safely. Shoutouts to the M9. I'm under attack. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this room is very tricky. Gonna take out all these guards and then... Yeah, I'll just take it from up here. Oh. Norm, sometimes I get them down there, sometimes I get them from above. It just depends on how I'm feeling. I just want to get them out of the way early, but... Get rid of those guards, get out of here before the attack team unit comes and wakes up all the guards. And off we go. Yeah, yeah the attack team will come relative to where the, the guard called the radio from. So because that guard was in the, the south, the attack team will come from the south as well. Which is useful because we're going out this north door. All right, so the EF bridge has several invisible mines, but we're going to toss a chaff grenade to get rid of some ciphers. And then we're going to cartwheel prone and Go just pick this one up. It's going to be a little bit easier for us later on. It, it's positioned in such a way to where it's just a pain not to pick it up, and it's going to be easier for our routing later. So this room is somewhat on a timer because we're waiting for the bomb to come out of the conveyor belt, so we're just going to take out all the guards and all the cameras in this room. We'll especially need to take out the cameras because we'll come back to this room towards the end of the game. And if we get spotted by one of those, bye-bye, game over. And yeah, there's four guards and three cameras in this room, and one of them is on the right here, so we had to take out the first one, take out the first two cameras that are in the front here, take out that guard and go over here, get on this camera, go under the conveyor belt, pick up the stun grenades, and that is just enough time for us to have met the cycle for the bomb that's on this crate. We could just spray through this crate with the coolant, not a big deal. So I tranked that guard again, and if I'm fast enough on the roof up here, he'll be still asleep when I come back. If I'm not, then I'll need to take him out right at the beginning of the stairs right there. It's a small optimization, so we'll see if I'm quick enough up here. Oh, there he is. Now, I, I still don't see what you mean, Joe. He doesn't look like I've seen him before. I don't know, it could just still be me, but uh, yeah, Strutty uh, Helipad is probably one of the, you know, most like time-like sensitive uh, you know, rooms in here. So you have to get to this bomb underneath the Harrier. And the uh, guard patrol pattern up here is very unforgiving if you're even just a little bit slow, because again, on European Extreme, they could see you from really far away and do the fact that we don't have a radar to see, but if you did, I mean, you could just picture like their field of vision cone just like almost going across like the whole screen. And yeah. this codec is scripted, so Lime's held the equivalent to the select button to open it on frame one so we don't have to listen to it ring at all. And we have our cardboard box. It's going to lower our profile just a little bit so that we are lower than the conveyor belt and the guards won't see us. I didn't see anything. All I saw was just a box. A, a box. box. Three. So this room is arguably the hardest room in bomb disposal just because you have three bombs and four guards in this room. Um, so I'm just going to take everybody out. And then you gotta be quick enough because if you get here too slow, then the guard on the bottom will spot you. But we should be just fine. And we'll and lure him to get him away. Too, because, because there are three bombs, um, I think it was New Game Plus or New Game, I forgot already. Um, two of these bombs right now are basically on top of each other. And then, like I said, on New Game Plus Plus or New Game, I forgot already. Um, one of these bombs is on the other side of the strut. Yeah, that's on plus plus. plus We're playing plus, on just okay. new game plus one, essentially. Yeah, you'll know you'll know the difference if you're on new game plus or new game plus 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 plus. They'll have Saab, Snake and Raiden will be wearing sunglasses that do absolutely nothing, except slow me down. I think. I don't know. I, I think they're ugly, so that's why I don't wear them. They're cosmetic. It's fine. Yeah. I think they suit Raiden. I remember Tyler said this when he did this run at GDQ. He said that uh, Raiden suits them and Snake doesn't. I think that's true. All right, got to be careful of this camera here, so we're just going to go right under it. Take a fine line so we don't get spotted. Take this guard out before he has a chance to do anything. 
And that's the majority of the bomb disposal. There's a couple more bombs we'll have to take out, but that's that's the bulk of it right there. All right, now we've made our full circle. There's another sensor we were going to have to grab because our, uh, Stillman was going to tell us again anyway to, hey, I made this other sensor. You should go get it. But, you know, Raiden being a, a, a good fella, he went to check up on Stillman and he was gone and left us this sensor. So we pick it up. I don't know, maybe Stillman left to go watch the stream or something. Yeah, though, we, yeah, though we know where the, the bombs are, uh, the game won't actually let us progress until we pick up Sensor B. Yeah, we're not going to actually use the Sensor, but Story Flag, we need it, unfortunately. Not taking any chances this time. Uh -huh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> So now that uh, we've defused all the uh, sensor A bombs, um, it triggers the final bomb, which is a sensor B type, where it cannot be uh, seen on the uh, radar in the upper right corner with the uh, like green, like little cloud thing. It's a bomb that can only be detected by sound. Um, but just due to the fact that we know where the bomb is, uh, you know, like they said, you don't really need to equip the sensor. You just need to have it in order to trigger this event. Um, you know, per the story. And, uh, you know, the one tricky thing about the sensor B bomb is, is, uh, you know, if you get too close to it, uh, boom. Yeah, it's got a proximity sensor, but, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Actually, come to think of it, I've never seen Does it. Does that apply whatever. in full game, though? Because that applies in the, the VR missions. I'm not sure if that applies I, in, in full game. I've never seen it, but... Yeah, because I've gotten right up close to this bomb we're about to defuse, and I've, I've never had an issue, so... It's just... I think it right happened to me in right VR. Yeah. Yeah, it does it in VR, but I've never seen it happen in full game. But they tell us that it's there. Okay. Oh, Rip Stillman. That's unfortunate. Such it's a good character. Got killed by the Mega Bomb in the other shell, the basically other half of the map, and most of which we will never see. So we're going to go defuse our own Mega Bomb here. Luckily, we know right where it is. And on European Extreme, it is in a very, very easy place. It's just right there for our convenience. And there we go. Very weird. The shell is so not we're going to fight Fortune now, uh, which is not one of the hardest boss fights in the game. Uh, <laughs> she is lethal. She fires much faster on European Extreme. She is a one-hit kill. Um, we just have to avoid her for a set amount of time. But we can actually speed this fight up a little bit by making her destroy certain things in the room. The forklifts are the most important. There's a, a set number of things in the room she has to destroy before this fight can actually end. We're in the box because it makes our turn-in radius better. We can turn back and forth much faster while in the box. <laughs> but yeah, just don't get hit or you're dead. Also, feel free to jam to uh, yell Dead Cell right now. This is my favorite track in this whole game. It is decent in a word. Yeah, and competition's pretty fierce because the music in this game is just outstanding overall. It really is. It's my favorite game by a smidge for a reason, and there's there's a lot of qualities about this game, especially substance with all the extra add-ons and VR missions and just, it's just all kinds of goodies that you really never get sick of. At least we're on PC, so there's no lag for this if you were to play this on, say, PS2. Or original Xbox, which I've, I've done a run of this game pretty much on any combination, any platform, any difficulty. Like, I've done literally everything there is to do in this game. And PC is by far the best way to play this game. I'm, I'm sure people remember what this was like in 2001, 2002 on the PlayStation 2. But, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of lag. And actually, that's one of the benefits of running this on PC is not only just not dealing with the lag with, you know, Fortune or, you know, Stinger lag uh, when we get to that point later, but it's the, the way that game is timed. Uh, there are, like, no loads, uh, which you have to worry about for your actual, like, you know, run final time on console, you know, depending on what version it is. You have to account for, you know, either loads, no loads, or there's a loading trick. Uh, if you're playing this on PS3 HD collection, like when I first started off, but uh, I don't know, I don't know about you, Glenn and Apache, but it's like once you've gone PC with this game, it's really hard to want to like go back. Yes, uh, absolutely. absolutely. It's the it's the fairest way to play as far as speedrunning goes as well. Yeah. This is based on the Xbox, the original Xbox port, so the Xbox plays pretty much the same, just has more lag. 
We did a little trick there. We can just give the guard a quick blast with the coolant um, and it will daze him. I, I just I just love that that interaction exists. He's not a fan of that fresh Febreze smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love being a good Febreze. Also, we got to be very careful with this uh, Cypher here. So that's why D-Limes is going to go into box just so he lowers his profile enough so when that Cypher turns, it won't see him. It, it's pretty convenient that you can use the time left there to use as a uh, bit of a visual cue for that Cypher. He's just a pain. And that's one of those, this is one of those little differences between uh, Game Over Discovered and Engoid, which um, you have to wait for him to come down because normally we would just round that corner, shoot him, just shoot him with the trank, and then cartwheel up the stairs, knock him out, and proceed on to our first real boss fight of the big shell, uh, Fat Man. My favorite boss fight in the game. Not my favorite. <laughs> there are two kinds of people. Also, if you like the bombs from before, well, guess what? There more bombs! More of them! <laughs> All right, yeah, so Fat Man's fun. Uh, big Go guy on roller skates, and he's just going to make fun of us real quick. We're going to trank him real quick, make sure before those stars appear, knock him over. Stars are going to appear as we take out the bomb. He's just going to do this Fat Man shuffle again, put him down, make sure that we get these headshots before those stars appear to let us get that extra shot in. And now we have to chase him around the arena. And basically rinse, wash, repeat, take him down six shots, and he'll go back down, and we're just going to follow him. He does have some iframes, so you may want to wait a little bit. And let's see, where is he going to go? Okay. Yeah, it takes six shots with the SOCOM to knock him off balance, and uh, depending on how well you time the shots, you can get two um, critical hits on the head. Yeah, this okay. is part of the fight that I hate is when he does this, like, zigzagging. Just for safety, grab some extra SOCOM. Where's he going? Okay. That was really well timed for picking up that ammo. Did you uh, fire something there? <laughs> <laughs> He'll do that if you shoot him in, the, in his blast suit with the with the M9. Right. So. Decent enough fight. That was that was fine. Yep. yep. As long as he doesn't plant any additional bombs, it was a good fight. And this is the final, final, final mega bomb, and that's we're done with bombs. Woo! I no promise. more bombs. No more bombs. Um, I think this would be another uh, good time for some donations as we get set up for the next part of the, the game. Of course. We got $25 from Danger Zone. Jack, do you know what day it is today? It's the last day of SGDQ. We hit $2 million for charity, obviously. I, I remember that being in the game. <laughs> Me too, yeah. We got $25 from Hit On by Solid Snake. Can't believe I'm making a $25 donation to the famous D Limes 13. <laughs> Good luck on the run. Thank you. Keep going? Um, one more. All right. We got $200 from Greater Steven. Try to donate every year for MSF. Glad I woke up in time to catch the rest of the Final Fantasy Ten run and excited for Metal Gear Solid 2 in the lineup for the rest of the day. Stay cool and play video games. Thank you, Steven. All right, that is a tricky cipher to get because I have to avoid all the Claymore mines that are just hidden on that bridge and try to take that out before the thing spots me. This room can be a little tricky because I learned there's a new way to get spotted in here the other day, so I'm gonna try to be super careful. And, okay, we're good. All right, yeah, we're good. We we did a bit of a little preview on our community channel, and according to Platonic Guy, Lime shot just a hair too high on that, and he came round the corner and spotted us. And yeah, if you shoot on the upper half of the wall for whatever reason, and I didn't know this up until about a week ago, he'll just go upstairs to investigate for whatever reason, like he heard the shot from upstairs. And if he does that, he turns around instantly and sees me. So yeah, no good. We're not gonna do that again. Yeah, so you'll notice that uh, Raiden has a different outfit now. Maybe he was just getting tired of the sneaking suit he was wearing. But we're now dressed up as one of the guards that you've seen from the tanker. Because uh, guards uh, guards that are positioned in the uh, Shell 1 core um, have this different uh, BDU outfit as opposed to the ones you've seen on the perimeter. And we need the AKS-74U so we can pass that security check uh, by that camera there. It will trigger an alert, which in this case, instant game over if you don't have either one. Um, and as long as you just have both these items equipped, I mean, hey, you're cartwheeling. I mean, they don't really seem to care 
Um, but you do want to be careful. You don't want to gain any unnecessary attention by, you know, bumping into them, which will unequip your BDU or attack them. Also, that parrot just says, hello. Hello. But um, we were supposed to get a B1, but uh, we need uh, the D mic for plot. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be trying to find a guy who has a pacemaker and a mullet, essentially. That's why we need the directional microphone so we know who he is. But I just look for the guy with the mullet. The rest is kind of irrelevant and a waste of time, but, you know, story flag. Yeah, so problem is, even though we have the disguise, we don't pass the biometric scan. So we're just going to borrow this guy. Thank you. It's, all, it's, it's for charity. All right, real quick, everyone. There are four sections. You have northwest, no, northwest, southwest, southeast, and northeast. Where is Colonel Ames? Southeast. There's about 20 different spots or so, and it is complete no RNG. Oh, no. 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 Where are no. you? No. Nope. Oh, he's in the middle of the room, so I'm going to have to do a backup. <laughs> oh, boy. This is pretty much the only room that's it's not fun. Your aims, aren't you? So the guards still Your think aims, I did, or they still think I have the, aims, the AK equipped because I did a punch-punch kick and then switched to the directional microphone during the kick. So they think I still have the full disguise on. If I didn't equip the directional microphone, they would have spotted me instantly from that position. So that's a nice uh, little backup we have in sticky situations like this. But this little section coming up, trying to escape this shell one core is very, very tricky. So. I'm going to concentrate on this for a couple minutes. All right, so our disguise was foiled, oh no, and we've lost the mask to our BDU, so our disguise is basically pointless at this point. And since we're on Goid, we have to wait for this guard to come a little bit closer than normal, and then we can get on the elevator here. Equip the chaff, and upstairs the cameras are still active, and because we don't have our, our mask to our BDU, we have to use up a chaff grenade here so that we can at least bypass the cameras, and we're going to take out a couple of guards here on our way out. There's somebody there. Ah, there's nobody there. Right? I didn't see anything. Yeah, so you have to be very careful when trying to exit. You know, because as you can see, not only is there a SWAT team guard on the... Uh, off to the left side of the screen when D-Lime's exited the elevator, but there's one with a riot shield at the exit, which is probably the one that I personally don't like the most. And guess what? Yep, ciphers are back. Ciphers are back, but at least now we have convenient AK-74. Easy peasy, just to take them out real quick. There we go. Yeah, and then also likewise, you know, you just have to be very mindful of uh, the mines on the bridge. I mean, they're still there uh, throughout the game, so we're just going to be taking the same paths as... Uh, He's been taken before. Ooh, man, that always yeah, makes are, me nervous. We are in caution. So per room, there is there is the normal guards, and then there's also extra guards investigating for the entire time that this caution is is active. And then that is the PSG one. We need that for story flag purposes, and I guess for utility for exactly one shot. And how do we go? That's a very hard room, so I'm glad I got through that okay. Yep. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, the plant costume theme is always like another jam. Yeah, it's a good one. I still think y'all I can't think of a bad track in this entire game. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> really aren't any. Also, we're going to be using the box once again, because like Apache said, because uh, it's an ongoing caution, you got a mix of uh, regular sentries with the SWAT team guards. And um, the BDU, while it, we don't have the mask portion anymore, it still does serve a purpose. Um, it kind of provides like indirect camouflage in a way, like where guards maybe won't see you right away. It does become important later after uh, this Harrier boss fight coming up. An unintended effect of it as well is if if there's a room where it renders a cutscene with Raiden in it, wearing it, that cutscene will take longer to load. Um, so on, not so much on PC, but definitely on PlayStation 2, you need to remember to take it off in certain places. Yeah, it's negligible on PC. It is still slower, but it's negligible. Right. Hey, wait a minute. I thought we were done with bombs. Well, these are different bombs, I guess. These aren't, these aren't <laughs> the stink bombs. These are, these are uh, going to sink your battleship. So there are 14 of these sensors I have to take out. If I shoot down these ciphers while the bombs are active, then the whole place blows up. But we got both of those. A-OK, -okay, no problem. As long as I don't shoot the Semtex, then we will get out of here, no problem. Interestingly, if you're playing on uh, PlayStation 2, if you have a second controller plugged in, you can control that flag waving uh, on the second controller. Decent. All right, good, good. 
Okay. Now the next boss fight. All right, so this is probably uh, everybody's favorite when it comes to watching this happen, but running it is a whole nother story. So we're going to be using this stinger that was dropped on the bridge for us, and d is going to go for a five hit. And he got it. Good. Um, you have to fire right away once you pick up the stinger if you want to get optimal damage. And what's going to happen is he's going to, you know, you know, jet stream away, and then he's going to do this like missile barrage, the Gatling gun. He's going to go down the steps to kind of take cover, and he's going to lock on front of the shot. Did not oh, help. No. Okay, so what's going to happen here too. is uh, what we call the the die shot. So if you cancel the cutscene as you see Solidus fly over the Harrier and he drops the carpet bombs. If you cancel it just right, you can get a, you know, an indirect lock on followed by a secondary, which it looked like he got. And then this is the, uh, yeah, the uh, let you go out in line in the whole game. <laughs> I was about to say that one's always fun to hear. Oh, that that's, that's, yeah. that's unfortunate. Oh, well. Yeah. So uh, you just saw D Limes kind of peek out with the SOCOM and you're going to see him do it again here, which is the uh, method to in order to survive this uh, missile barrage here because every time you peek with the SOCOM and then go back and repeat It gives you iframes, which is very convenient uh, For surviving the missiles because uh, they will kill you in one hit here We have not done enough damage, so he's gonna fly away here and We're gonna have to extend this by just a hair, which is really unfortunate He did fire two stingers at the Harrier when he popped up from below, but uh, I didn't see them connected you No, no how far? It's all right, good. Good enough. Right. Good enough. Okay. Very good fight. Yeah, ideally you want to end that fight during the missile barrage where you don't see them, uh, you know, fly away. It just, you know, loses you probably like, maybe like 30, 40 right, seconds. Faith. Here we go. Leave okay. Woo! <laughs> Scary every time. Yeah, you can go down the, uh, you know, go into hanging mode and then drop down on the pipe and then just make your way across that way. But if you time the cartwheel on the, uh, the edge of the busted bridge, you can make it. I, I don't care how many times I've run this game, that this leap still scares me. Also, this yeah, is where the BDU comes in handy here because uh, if we don't have this equipped, the guards uh, right there will spot us right away, even though it's very questionable why they don't see us in the first place. Maybe to distract by the seagulls. Playing. Is yeah, Metal the Gear. They're timing is very tight on that. So if I was like maybe a second later, I would have got I would have got spotted even with the BDU on. Yeah, they're not that blind in this game, but knock here to distract that guard and go on here super super early so we can avoid what we call the D line special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's where you just run and fall off the edge. All right. So you might be wondering why are we swapping between weapons? Well, it's this is something that also carried over into Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Um, Rydens in, in Twin Snake Snakes, their position will reset on certain weapon swaps. So we do that to actually move just a hair faster because that animation is really, really slow. Also, that guard in the rooftop, uh, I, I don't think he went before the, the stream today. He, he was unprepared. But there's right. only one toilet in, in, like, in, on either side of the shell. So like he's so far from it that he doesn't have a choice. He might not be allowed breaks, I don't know. All right, so a nice optimization here. If you turn during the cutscene, you'll actually be facing that way when you exit the cutscene. Um, who found that? I did. It saves like one frame. I found that. Appreciate your contribution. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, for that. So uh, now that we're in Shell 2, we're going to be uh, rescuing uh, President Johnson, who is locked in this room. Uh, guarded by a uh, electrified uh, floor panels. Um, and we need to get the Nikita uh, launcher in order to uh, fire a missile remotely to take out the power generator in there. And so we're going to be going for a bit of a swim uh, in order to get the Nikita. Its location varies based on difficulty. I wish I could use my cell phone underwater. Yeah, I mean, that's that would be very convenient, wouldn't it? I can for about, like, maybe five minutes, so. <laughs> it's a lot longer than I could. Of course, it's not as easy as you think, because guess what? Yep, somebody planted some uh, underwater mines in here, which kind of like the ongoing theme of European Extreme. You, you touch that, you're dead. Yeah, they, they look yeah, fun to touch, you're, but they're not fun here. Is your, that a European water Extreme is that you touch it, you die difficulty. Pretty much. <laughs> um, that goes for everything in the game. Yeah, and, and I guess while uh, D-Limes is making his way back up, uh, I think this would be another good time for uh, a couple donations. 
Oh, heck yeah, dear bud. We got a whole bunch of love coming in from the MTSR community here. Let's uh, start with $25 from Johnny H521. Congrats on crossing off your streamer bucket list and making it to the live stage, Limes. You make the MGSR community proud. We also got $10 from Elrod VHD. So awesome to see both D Limes and Joe Star running MGS and the same GDQ. That's good, Snake. Got fifty dollars oh. from Himalaya Sals. Just says, "Nano machine, son." I knew I forgot to do something, so I'm supposed to distract the president. That way, he gets away from that area. So now I'm gonna have to really improvise and not kill them. So this is gonna be interesting. Very yeah. So uh, if you, you touch doing? him with the with the missile, he dies, and then you die because of that. Okay. All right. Good, good yeah. enough. So <laughs> it's fine. The president really has to stay alive for another uh, ten or fifteen seconds. All right, we can do a few more donations. All right. We got $50 from Eladimir. First time attending GDQ in person. Let's get 120 stars unlocked. Awesome to watch D Limes 13 crushing Metal Gear Solid in the audience. Woo! Hi. Woo, indeed. <laughs> got $25 from Athena21. My first memory of MGS2 is of a boy on the school bus trying to tell me about it, and I told him not to spoil it. I'm glad, because I played it and it is one of my favorite games of all time. Thanks, Athena. It is a good game. $25 from, oh, that's Raspberry. I played MGS2 for the first time recently, so super exciting to see the speedrun. Keep it up as well as $75 from Theory. Let's go Limes at GDQ again, both MGS2. Smash it, mate. Also, spam movement. <laughs> <sighs> Shout out, Theory. Thank you, Theory. All right, somebody want to explain Swim Glitch? All right, I guess I'll take a crack at it. So uh, we saw the swimming before as intended when we got the Nikita. So we're going to break the game a bit here. So uh, what we're going to do this time around is D-Limes is going to match the ceiling height uh, with Ride in here, and he's going to swim on this wall on a very specific angle, and if done right... Wow, look, you're swimming in air. And then guess what? Hey, they didn't patch the ceiling there, so we could just swim right hey. through it. You got that was a good try, like, go. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, so now we're swimming across, uh, you know, B1 of Shell 2, and then we're going to surface into what's the loading zone for uh, the next fight with Vamp. So, yeah, nicely done. Well done, indeed. All right, so he is a one-hit kill. We're basically going to bait him to come out and swipe at us with his knife. Get out just at the right time so we have iframes, and then we're just going to punch him to death and hopefully not get killed. And yeah, this is one of those tricks where this is something I learned casually before I discovered speedrunning on my own is this particular glitch um, where if you're close enough to him, he'll just continue to swipe at him. You can just slap him to death. So you can get quite a few hits in here. I know comfortably for me, it's about five, six, maybe seven. I know uh, Joe sometimes will go for, what, nine? Yeah, he's, he's a awesome man. Thing. Joe's really good <laughs> at this fight. Yeah, I mean, the amount of punches you can get will make this go by faster, but there, it does add a higher risk to it. There's even a method that uh, BMN has done where it, it, it starts it off differently, but allows you to get up to like 10 punches. Uh, without, you know, getting knifed, but it is incredibly risky. But hey, nicely done on Vamp. Indeed. That, that fight Good honestly fight. looks easier than it, than it really is. It's, it's very, we very talented. talk about that, that was for so long. All Actually, right. it was thanks to speedrunning uh, when I watched this, uh, when Tyler played this uh, a few years ago that uh, it, it went from like hating Vamp to actually just looking forward to it because like you could just kind of get that sweet revenge of just struggling with them, uh, you know, growing up and playing the game. Yeah. So the game is going to slow down here for a little bit. We're going to be rescuing uh, our good friend Emma. Friend, quote unquote. Um, so maybe explain briefly what this is going to entail, and then we're going to have time for so many donations. Uh, yeah, uh, we picked up the body armor there just for a start. We're going to need that later. Um, the body armor turns certain attacks that are one hit kills into two hit kills, so it's, it's super useful. Worth the 10 seconds to pick it up. Definitely. Agreed.
Yeah, and then Emma Emmerich is, uh, you know, Ada Khan's, uh, I think, what was it? Her step, his yeah, stepsister. Yeah, stepsister. Um, she was brought in to, uh, you know, program the AI, which we'll learn about uh, a little bit more later with uh, Arsenal Gear. And we need her help, which, funny as I say that, we just kind of leave her behind, but you don't actually have to bring her into the next room. She couldn't um, walk, I feel like, too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, she looks okay to me, but she, she's been sedated with drugs, so she can't really walk on her own. So we have to literally hold her hand uh, for the majority of this. And, uh, you know, so, but in the context of the story, we need to bring her back over to Shell 1, where there was the computer lab with the, uh, uh, where we got the D mic uh, in the B2 floor of Shell 1. Um, and this is kind of one of the parts of the game where it's, you know, you can kind of relax, take a breather. Um, which, funny enough, going back underwater again, and normally this hatch would be open, uh, but because D-Limes did the swim glitch, uh, the game just doesn't know that we never went through there yet. So this is one of the things about the swim glitch is, like, you save time up front, but then you lose, um, what is it, like six seconds to open the door? Eight. Or eight, eight seconds. Um, so you have to kind of, like, subtract that in uh, when attempting the swim glitch, and man, I don't know how you swim through those two mines without hitting it. I mean, it just scares me every time. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're just going to be escorting her through a few rooms. We're going to have to take out a couple guards and a couple ciphers, so this is a pretty chill time for some donations. Sounds good to me. We got $100 from Drew Barbs. MGS is my favorite game series, and MGS2 is a standout. Good luck to d Lambs on the run, and thanks to the GDQ crew for putting on a great event for a great cause. Thank you, Drew. That's very kind of you. We got $50 from Anonymous. Hey, GDQ, love what you do. Happy to, do to donate for charity at every event you do. Hope everyone is having an amazing time. Good luck to all the runners. Donation goes to Host Choice which I would love to see that Metroid Dread boss rush, personally. I think that's the first time we're seeing that in an event like this. So, yeah, let's see that. The boss rush is really cool for Dread. We got $1,000 from Carl Sagan 42. Woo! Very nice. They say, you are all wonderful people, and yes, that means you! I didn't get an official death count yet for Team Double Jump Dinos, but this hopefully should cover it. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. I think, think you might have done it. But that is not all. So we also have $2,000 from Anonymous. Wow. Woo! With no comment, but thank you so much. And that's not all. We have $3,000 from Anonymous. Oh, my God. Let's go. Who says... Smiling, winky, kissy face emoji. What? You, thank, thank you. You're making me blush. <laughs> so what you just saw uh, D Limes do there with Emma is what we call the Emma bump, um, where you lead her up to the door um, as it's open and you just kind of like push her through. Um, it, it allows Emma to kind of spawn in a little bit further ahead into the next room. It just saves you a little bit of time. On PC, it's I want to say relatively safe to do, but on console, it's very risky because for some reason on console, when you do that Emma bump, uh, there's a chance the game could soft lock where Emma falls to the floor, goes into the ocean, and uh, yeah, you can't really grab her key card anymore. You can't proceed. And uh, it's, you know, something I've done for years, even though I was advised against it many, many times until I finally <laughs> learned the hard way. Yeah, for so whatever reason. It's a 99% chance to soft lock your game for whatever reason on, on this version of the game, the floor and uh, coming out of the core is a little bit further, I think, than it is on, say, HD Collection. Um, on HD Collection, I see people go for it, and Emma will, you'll notice her fall through the floor as she'll walk through the door, and at that point, your run is dead. You can't get her back. Uh, it's just, it's not a good time. Free on PC, don't try it on console. Being God, yeah, super so precise there. there, taking out those two guards. It's very easy to hit these guards. You aim for their back of the head. Sometimes it'll just get their neck for some reason. I think it, if the neck gets hit, they're going to turn around. They're going to spot you, and that's GG. So took that extra save. But this is the infamous Twilight sniping section. So 
We're going to be taking out a bunch of guards, some claymore mines that are on the bridge, and some ciphers as Emma walks across the oil fence to the other, other side of the big shell, since we can't get there by other means. It was destroyed. So this would be a great time for donations. Sounds good to me. We have $250 from Annie. Greetings from Berlin. Thanks to everyone working this incredible event. From Annie, Adeline, and Julian. Thank you so much. We got $25 from Zinteld. Another GDQ event is slowly coming to a close. Everyone involved has done a fantastic job once again. Thank you for all your hard work, and let's make sure we close GDQ out with a bang. Yeah, let's do just that. Can we get some hype for getting this closed out with a bang? Woo! Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Keep going. Sure. All right, we got $100 from Darklink41. You're all great, and I hope you know just how much everyone appreciates every single person involved in this event. No, you're great, Darklink. You're great. $250 from Tesla the Murderous Trombonist, which great name, by the way. <laughs> Dollar per day keeps the borders away for the doctors and such. $100 from, oh boy, Guivir, Guivir, I think Guivir. Thank you to the runners, hosts, and the GDQ crew. Been watching all these years, and these are always a fantastic time. Thank you for supporting such a great cause. Thank you. And keep going? You sure. Got all right. Time. You got probably three, four minutes of this. Go, go. Jeez, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have... 200 and 250 dollars from anonymous no comment but thank you very much we got 15 dollars from bitter blue such a great event thank you to all those who made this event possible and so much fun you did and still do an amazing job less than three good luck to all the runners 25 dollars from dallas have you heard of their critically acclaimed charity, Doctors Without Borders, which includes the entirety of Summer Games Done Quick and award-winning bonus incentives? Donate today! Let's see. $100 from Anonymous. Another GDQ event almost over. These always go by so fast, and this has been a very quick week. I agree. Mm-hmm. One quick thing I'd like to point out real quick is we have a bounty to skip this section in our community. I think it's upwards of like a couple grand or so. You can see why we don't really care for this section all too much. So if you're a programmer, engineer, whatever, have interest, please put us out of our misery. I, I don't yeah, want to do this of, anymore. <laughs> to a, be lot, fair, a lot of like any really sequence break. That is a lot of really good glitch hunters have, have taken a crack at this game and never been able to find like a full sequence break. We can skip small sections, but we've never been able to actually break the sequence. It, it is theoretically possible, uh, but that's why the bounty just keeps going up because as we get more speedrunners come and join this game, they keep saying, yeah, I want I want a skip for this game too and add into that much. So it's, mm -hmm. it's community funded, the uh, Metal Gear speedrunners community. It, it's so weird too, because we there have been new skips and glitches found in um, MGS1 recently and MGS3. Uh, this game is still nothing. No, just, just sitting still there nothing. static. Like we, we, have, we have some skips, which we'll, we're, we're going to come up on some in late game, but um, just not that huge, defining, game-breaking one where it just completely makes our lives easier. So, I don't know. No sequence breaks for this game yet. It just it blows my mind. This game is surprisingly well put together in quotes. It's so well made, yeah, it's <laughs> like, Yeah, for, for a 20 year old game, this is very, very well made. And I think it stands the test of time pretty well from a gameplay standpoint. It's aged pretty well, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I guess one of the things I, uh, you know, don't know if most people notice like throughout this sniping section is uh, when, when you have turbo enabled, it's not only just for skipping the codec text lines faster in the cutscenes, but it turns your uh, semi-auto sniper into fully automatic. It allows you to fire the thing way faster than anyone possibly could. Uh, it's great accuracy. until you don't notice that you have it on. <laughs> <laughs> I already did that once this run. You, you probably didn't notice it, but... 
Yeah, if you have I, an item at the I, wrong I, section, it can be bad. It's fine. Yeah. If you have it on, like, if you go to grab a guard, you'll just instantly choke him out, so you got to watch that. Here we go. Oh, yeah, and then a big shocker, uh, that Bliskin fellow that I was talking about. Oh, yeah, it's really solid snake. What? I know. It's, it's, it's Debatable. You, you're telling me you were right at this point? I, you, I thought I was crazy. Him before. But, I mean, yeah, he, he actually called in, said, hey, I'm here to help you, which... On this difficulty, doesn't really mean a whole lot because he literally shows up at the very end when we already took out the last cipher. But yes, that was the big shocker. And even worse, his aim sucks. Yes. All right, this is Vamp again. We're just gonna take those like a little bit. How did he survive? That's a fight. That yep, was that a was fight. Vamp. Okay, that's a fight. Great Vamp too. It is considered a boss fight, at least on speedrun.com. So. <laughs> <laughs> Now we enter end game. Yay. Did somebody, what happened there? It's like somebody got punched in the nose and they had to be taken away. Yeah, somebody spilled their cranberry juice probably. But anyway, we have to get back to the computer room. Uh, there's gonna be one guard we have to take out and uh, a couple of ciphers on the bridge coming up here. If we take a game over in a timed section like this, then we have to restart the entire section over again. So very important that I don't get spotted here. So we're just gonna throw a chaff grenade on this bridge, disable the cameras, and be on our merry way. Yeah, so the ciphers are still around as before, and the connecting bridge going into uh, shell one, the panels that were um, loosened and fell into the ocean, they stay missing. And uh, personally, I can't recall how many times I've fallen through that bridge not paying attention, just going on autopilot at this point. Oh, no. Ooh. I went for a, a, a stereo there, basically skipping all the stairs, and I just did it a little bit too early. Oh well. That's fine. All right, now this is really where the game gets ramped up, but we got time for like maybe one or two donations before the, the action starts. Sure. We got $25 from Plywood. Woo! Hey, yeah, plywood. plywood. Yeah, that's a name I know too. Big congratulations to Joseph Josar of Mecha Zeranium and D Limes 13 for showing off these awesome Metal Gear runs. D Limes, we are counting on you, letting this day go out in style. We're all cheering for you in the Metal Gear Speedrunners Discord, my friend. High concentration Thanks, of we also got $5 from Homeschool Joey. Stayed up too late last night watching the runs, and I fell asleep. I remember getting Metal Gear Solid 2 on launch date at my local Circuit City and have such great memories of the game. Best of luck to the runner and lolly lolly. Whoa, let's get to two million. Woo! Let's make it happen. Yeah. You can't keep this up. They're bound to find you. Time for one more? Uh, one quick one, yeah. All right, $25 from Bro Randy. Games Done Quick has always been a favorite of mine along with the Metal Gear Solid series. You are all doing an amazing job for doing this. All right, guys, want to explain this wonderful section called Arsenal Gear? Well, uh, at this point, we lost all of our gear, and they literally took the clothes off our back, and I mean, quite literally. And the streaking section is quite interesting, so this may have looked familiar if you played MGS1, but it doesn't matter. We're going to hold select coming through this door, and that way we open the codec on frame one. And what the colonel says doesn't really matter. It's more important is this guard won't actually Who's spot there? us. He'll be, Who's there? I don't know. Maybe it's the helmet. They just can't really see anyway. Yep. But, um, this is where the colonel is going a little crazy, the AI, and he is going to just kind of try and distract us and get us to quit and do all kinds of things just so uh, that we don't complete our mission. Ooh, Ooh nice. nice. Solidus, thank you. We cartwheeled over that. If he fell down that, that would have been very bad, very unfortunate, and the backups for this room are just uh, teeth clenching, at, to put it mildly. And in this room, we're just going to have quite a few more codex. And the last one will be talking to Rose again, and the plot will continue. But um, there's not much really else to talk about. I think we have time for a couple donations. Yeah. Sweet. We got $5 from Tabaru. I had to donate during the MGS run. Great event as always. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We got... 
$10 from D Magico. Good morning, everyone. Good to get to see some Final Fantasy and Metal Gear. What an awesome morning. Good luck on the run and keep on keeping on. <laughs> $5 from Patriot03. Thanks for giving MGS2 on the stage. It's my favorite game in the series. See, I told you it was Snake. Yeah, we do a couple more. Like okay. Still, huh? $50 from JFNV. Second time donating this week. This MGS2 run is just amazing. Good luck to D-Limes13 and all runners. Ooh, we also got $10 from Rosemary. Mm. Jack, do you know what day it is tomorrow? $25 from Gamer Corgi. Let's get that Metroid Droid boss rush. Had a ton of fun with that game. Yo, me too. Yeah, let's see it. All right. Arguably the couple hardest sections of the game coming up, Tengu 1 Tengu 2, both are going to involve skips. Both can be scary in its own right. I'm just going to play the game. All right. So with uh, Tengu 1, it's uh, like in the Guard Rush and Tinker, it's one of the scripted alert sequences. So what he's going to do is start off with throwing a stun, which is going to knock out these guards uh, right in the area, except for that, that guy, which guy. is unlucky. He's wearing sunglasses. Yeah, so he's going to basically lead up to this door, just throwing stuns. Ooh, getting a little dicey. Okay. Nope. Oh, oh, my Ooh. turbo just failed me. I'm going to take a continue here, maybe. Ooh. Hey, oh, let's go. Saved it. Oh my god, Woo. that was so scary. God. So uh, what happened there at the <laughs> end was uh, when you lay up against the door uh, with Raiden and then you go into first-person camera and start the punch-punch kick, um, if you let go of the camera on the kick, uh, Raiden's leg will actually go through the tour and touch the loading zone on the other side, allowing you to just skip what's a very lengthy uh, Tinga one. And then Snake, as much as we like him, we're just going to put him to sleep. Uh, we're going to be doing what's the uh, Tengu 2 coolant skip, uh, which... I mean, I, I mean, again, they, they look fancy, but I mean, their helmets are useless. I mean, look, I mean, it's just, Febreze spray is just too powerful. It's too strong. I think They're he's just going to defuse this situation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> so for the longest time, this was only available on the Sons of Liberty PS2 versions of the game. You could skip this fight this way. But recently, Platonic Guy and myself uh, refined the fight to where he found that if we interact with the guards after a certain amount of time, basically after a minute and five seconds into this fight, and then do it like a punch-punch kick combo to domino the guards at the end, it'll just skip the fight and basically time out the fight. There was another means that we had to skip the fight by choking one of the guards and just hiding in the back of the room. And that was very risky because Tengus could come back there and kill us or just it couldn't work for some reason. But with this method, this is by far the best method, and it is faster. Safer and faster yeah. speedrunner's dream for strats. Hopefully. Oh, yep, there, there it goes. Hey. Oh. Oh. Good thing, too. <laughs> Good thing I had that extra health. That's why I crouched and healed beforehand, just in case. So, so this is right before the Metal Gear Ray fight. This is right before my home, easiest boss fight in the game, said no one ever except myself. Um, so we got about maybe 60 seconds worth of donations, and then we're going to have to fight 20 Metal Gear Rays. Oh, boy. All right, we got $25 from Aspie Channel. Throwing in what I can. Thank you, and good morning from Australia. We got $526 from Pausa, who simply says, Pausa. And let me tell you something, Pausa. When that Wind Waker run comes around, you'll get all the Pausa that you can Pausa. $10 from Wolfpack. GDQ is always a good time. Glad to see y'all back in person donating for the Dread Boss Rush. Love that game and would love to see more of it. Came in handy as $25 from a poor college student. Oh, feel yeah. that. Yep. I am super hyped for Wind Waker, one of my favorite games growing up. $15 from Bitter Blue. Such a great event. Thank you to all who made this event possible and so much fun. You did and still do an amazing job. Good luck to all the runners. All right, here we go. All right, good luck, Limes. All right, so there are... 20 rays that we have to actually take out, but you'll only ever actually see three of them with full health cards at a time. 
Uh, there is a little of a loop here that Lime is going to try and set up, but ideally we're going to just shoot them in the knees, wait for their head caps to open, and take out as much health as we can. Um, it takes three critical shots with their heads open, plus one shot anywhere on their head to take them out. So they're not the most durable of Metal Gears that you'll see in the series, but they uh, collectively are one of the more tedious uh, fights in the series, or at least in my opinion. I'm not lying here, he thinks this is easy. Um, the loop is very easy to drop, and once you drop it, it can be very difficult to get it back. It is possible, but it's, it can be a pain. Yeah, this is one of the beauties of running this on uh, PC, is just due to the fact that you're not dealing with really egregious uh, stinger lag, where you just fire off a stinger round, your just whole game slows down. It's more noticeable on, you know, PS2, PS3. Um, I think on X series, it's uh, improved where it's similar to this, but as you can see, the Razor primarily coming in from one side of the stage here, and each time a Ray jumps on stage, D-Limes is uh, multitasking with spreading damage out to the next Ray that's due up, and the way that you know the next Ray is up to hop on stage is the one with the lowest HP uh, in the vicinity will be the one that's up next, so we use that to our advantage. Uh, when it comes to its uh, mechanics of uh, this encounter here. So that ray that D-Limes just destroyed is just going to jump on stage just because of how it was timed, which gives D-Limes plenty of time to set up damage on, you know, these other rays. Uh, you know, so like one ray jumps on stage, another one hops off, and then another one comes in from the background, even though it's a little bit hard to see. But if you look in the back, there is like a whole like uh, column of rays there, which, you know, as he's going through each one, another one kind of like starts to get up and move over to the the stage and it goes um a through e if you look at the ray number id so like it goes like a01 a02 a03 and it goes um well i think normally it goes up as high as like e2 um by the time it's all said and done but it, it kind of gives you a, a, a kind of gives you like a gauge as far like how far you're really in so right now he's up to the, the c2 3 and 4 so he's about uh, just about halfway. Yeah, you'll never you'll never really see E04 or E05. Um, you only need to take out 20 health bars of these rays. You don't need to take out 20 units individually. So you could get into you know E3, but um, you'll never you'll never see the end without uh, a practice bot that we have for this fight, where you can actually just kind of like do survival and the rays will continuously spawn. But um, he's holding it so looking good here on rays so yeah and then you'll notice that like every once in a while he uh you know steps off from this corner here which is um kind of like a nice little safety spot for each time a ray jumps on stage if you're too close to one it'll knock you off balance and if you're even way too close you'll actually get splat um which has happened to me way too many times uh doing this encounter um and at the same time when he goes in the first person view he's allowing the ammo box for the singer to spawn so he can just fill up on uh, his stinger ammo and then just quickly go back to the corner again. And the stinger in European Extreme only has 20, so we actually do have to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and the window for that can be, can be tight if you allow it to be. Final set. Come on. It's really doing a good job of making this fight look not challenging at all when it, when it truly is. It's so, so difficult. Yeah, at least, at least they're not attacking, because which attack they're going to use on you depends on how close you are. So if you're right up against him, he's going to try and step on you. About that mid-range, it'll shoot the water cutter at you. And if you're even further away, it'll use the machine gun. And even further than that, it'll fire its D missiles at you. And those can be a pain in the butt. But yeah, those holding. are very yes. scary to dodge. Let's go! Really nicely done. <laughs> very nicely done in the race. <laughs> All right. Cheeky save boss completely warranted. The Arsenal AI we have um, the, the torture section I and then one final fight with Solidus. Um, playing absolutely amazing, mate. So I'm old, I'm 30 years old, and I am like to preserve my wrists. And this the is the main reason why we have Curl, because son. we would normally have to mash at a rate of about eight to nine oh. mashes per second to get through this torture. And frankly, a lot of people just cannot do this. And they could not play this difficulty for the longest time because of it. Thanks to Turbo, we can stay healthy and not have to do this absolutely unnecessary torture. I can do it. I just, I want to preserve my health. 
Yeah, this, and, uh, this torture, torture sequence actually got nerfed in the HD collection because even they thought it was too... Yeah, that went from 50 long. to 15 seconds it, in it the HD It would have been over by now Yeah, the time we talked about this. Like, and on the PAL PS2 version, it's 60 seconds. Like, that, that's just completely unnecessary, and it doesn't, it doesn't gain anything. Yeah, I was about to say, like, PS2 Sons of Liberty, it's, like, over a minute or, like, 65 seconds. It's just... Yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's painful to look at it when you see someone trying to match for that long. Can I get some hype for healthy life choices? Yeah. Yeah, Woo! let's go. Yeah, look after your hands, because I didn't, and I regret it so much. All right, final boss fight, Solidus. I'll let you guys Let's go, this. one more fight. Let's go, last fight. Joe, you want to... You want to explain what Solid is here? Oh, sure. So uh, while the AI kernel is uh, trolling Raiden and battle wits, I guess you can call it, uh, Solidus is probably one of the most intense fights uh, in the run, uh, where it's going to be a mix of trying to you know, continue a loop that uh, we just saw with the rays, but just uh, in a different form, and then you know, dealing with a little bit of bouts of RNG, and usually in between phase one and two of Solidus. Um, so what's going to happen is he's going to start off by going up to Solidus, kind of attacking once, trigger a counterattack kick. Okay, so you got, you got a little bit uh, mixed up with the punches there. So what he's going to do is he's going to start off an attack, he's going to get him to block, get, do a counterattack kick, and he's going to stagger his punches so he doesn't punch three in a row because we don't want him to exceed his hitbox. I'm just not cooperating, and I'm fighting the camera angle too. Yeah, I was about to say, the, the, the worst thing about this fight, other than Solidus's RNG at times, is the camera. Uh, depending on where you are on this rooftop of the federal building, it's not the greatest to deal with. But what you're seeing here is he's staggering his punches where he's going one, two, pause, and then another punch. If you punch three times in a row, it makes Solidus fall over, and then he's going to zip away and then just do some really nasty things. So what he's doing is he's attacking on his good side, which is on his right, uh, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, because his left eye was shot out during the Harrier fight, so he has an eye patch on it, and we use that to our advantage when doing this loop, where we attack on his good side so he blocks, and then you swap over to his other side with the, with the eye patch where it's his blind spot, and uh, this is how you can continue the loop. So now he's going to ditch the Dr. Octopus arms, you know, he's like, all right, man, I'm getting serious now. So now, Glenn, I'm hoping for the people's elbow we here. want the people's elbow. He's going to zip around and go across the map, and let's go. Nope. Oh. Yeah, see, this is part of the RNG I was talking about, is uh, in, in his transition to phase two here, um, he'll actually do, like, an elbow uh, when he goes to attack. Uh, in this case, he just does sword combos and just, you know, make us waste time. So again, he's just going to continue the loop that he did from phase one. And time, time is on the final hit of the this final hit. Yeah. Good, good thinking. Great minds and all that. Come on now. He's getting some much nicer camera angles now. Uh, uh, okay, he kicked. Sometimes he will want to, you know, he'll try and zip away from you and then he'll come at you real fast again, so this, this is good. Yeah, and then I don't know if we explained it, but the reason why we're doing this in the non-lethal version, other than uh, for Big Boss, but it's actually faster to do it this way as well, so it kind of works out that way. Yeah, you can get more attacks off. Yeah, I think faster. he needs, like, four more hits. Let's go, Limes. Oof, okay. That, that attack. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, let's go! Woo! That was actually a Big Boss is, run, too, by the way. I believe that this is the Big first boss. time... Anyone's got big boss at GDQ. Man, and way to two. go. Can't believe it. We've goid as well. That is unbelievably difficult to do. No save and get the highest rank as well. Absolutely amazing run. Yeah, no kills, no continues. Well, there are no rations on your Phoenix stream. And the scripted alerts were good. That yeah. is big boss rank. Wow, way to go. So I'm, I'm a little under the weather. I... I'm not feeling all that great, so I, I, I gave this everything I had and then some. I am exhausted from this, but getting Big Boss in an in-person GDQ is something I never, ever would have expected. That's for sure. Um, Good job, man. That is, that is so hard to do in a one-take, one-off run. Like, you, you have no idea, but... Uh, I'll be brief real quick. Um, I, I do want to thank the guys on my couch. Uh, Glenn, Joe, Apache on remote. I mean, 
You guys are incredible. Um, you guys have been with here with me the whole way. I do greatly appreciate it. Big shout outs to the Metal Gear speedrunning community. I know they're watching in the, the Discord VoIP and um, they're they're cheering me on and whatnot. I hope I hope I made you guys proud with this. Uh, be sure to visit our website, MetalGearSpeedrunners.com. Uh, we have a Discord. We have a full wiki if you want to learn any of these games. Um, you know, original Metal Gear, Metal Gear Survive, everything in between. I don't know why you learned Survive, but... Um, <laughs> sorry, Plywood. Ch check us <laughs> out. Ch check us out. It's a cool place to hang in, even if you don't want to speedrun. Um, and then just a quick shout-out to uh, my lovely wife, Allison. She's, she's in the crowd. Um, we just got married three weeks ago, and we... Thank you. And um, we made the journey up here. It's been a very hectic, very busy, busy time for us. And she's been a big supporter of me and what I do and what I've been doing the last four years. And she makes some pretty awesome apparel as well. So that's what all these guys have on and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for, for me. Anything else, guys? Uh, well, I guess, uh, where, where, where can they find Smash. you, uh, D-Limes? Oh, yeah, I, I probably should <laughs> shout out my own Twitch. You know, I, I, I hate being selfish. I do stream every now and then, um, twitch.tv slash D-Limes13. I stream Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, VR stuff, all kinds of stuff on occasion, even some Gran Turismo here and there. So um, check me out, give me a follow. I'll be streaming next week, I'm sure. So, um, But, yeah, uh, thanks to GDQ for having me uh, showcase this run, and um, let's, uh, let's have a great rest of the day. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having us. Uh, games done quick, and of course, uh, D Lines. Thank you for asking uh, the three of us. Uh, you know, doing comms for you. It's it's kind of surreal, like how many years it's been uh, since yeah. I first started to learn how to run this game, and you just popped in my uh, yep. Twitch chat one day, and you know, one thing led to another, and you know, here we are. Yep. Yep. So, all right. I think that's it from us, guys. Thank you. Holy heck, that was incredible. Let's give it up one more time for D-Limes 13. First ever Big Boss ranking here live on stage. Oh, Lordy. Got a, got a couple more donations here. Got $100 from The Sound of Fence. It's always great to see Metal Gear Solid at GDQ. Except for the part where I changed my phone's text sound to the codec noise, so I'm constantly grabbing my phone while watching a speedrun. Still, great job, D-Limes13. I cannot emphasize that enough. That was incredible. Got $25 from Cyberbot X. Happy Saturday morning to SGDQ. I'm both excited and sad that today is the last day of my runs. Best of luck to all the runners. Put this to the boss rush in Metroid. All right, and we're about to go over to a Twitch ad. We will be right back, folks.
All right, welcome back, folks. Well, sad, as much as it saddens me to say, this about does it for me here this week at GDQ. Man, it has been such an honor and privilege to lend my voice here. I, I've just been overjoyed to have been part of this. Oh, th thank you. Thank you so much. I sincerely hope I get to do this sometime in the future again. Um, but, you know... Don't despair, as much as you may love my dulcet tones, we have the always incredible Happy by Three coming to take over for me. But before that, I'm understanding that there's a, there's a couple of prizes out there that you might just uh, be able to get uh, your hands on if you donate. So uh, let's throw it over there. Take it easy, folks. Good to see you. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Good morning, Summer Games Done Quick 2022. How y'all doing today? Good, good. I am glad there is still energy because let me tell you, we may have, let me check my watch here, we may have less than like 20 hours left, but we are nowhere near done. So let's keep that energy up. This is still a marathon. We've still got a ways to go. And I still have a lot of amazing prizes to show off. Uh, this prize block is Packed. I'm not going to remotely get through everything we have available right now. So, the short version. $25 donation. GamesDoneQuick.com slash donate. Put in $25. You're entered to win everything we've got available from now through the end of Wind Waker in a couple of runs. $100 gets you in to win the day prize. $200 cumulative gets you in to win the grand prize. And I'm going to run through and talk about a bunch of those prizes now. Starting with, from Pearl Pop. I love their stuff. I keep saying it and it keeps being amazing. We got Super Meat Boy. Look at this. It's adorable. It looks so... I mean, it, it's so nice to see Super Meat Boy uh, on screen and looking healthy. Because when I played Super Meat Boy, there was a lot of... Um, not that condition for Meat Boy. $5 minimum donation gets you in to win this Perler. Thank you so much, Pearl Pop, for sending that in. From Little Animart... Uh, for a $10 minimum donation, I don't have it here with me, but we have the Metal Gear Solid puppy painting. You can check out a picture of that and see more details again on the website, gamestonequick.com. Who doesn't love puppies? I, I miss my dogs this week. And you could have a puppy in a painting. $10 minimum donation. Get you into win that. I want to follow up with some Final Fantasy prizes after that amazing FFX cutscene skip run earlier this morning. That was awesome. Starting with, from Ihwatsen. For a $10 minimum donation, we have a trio of Final Fantasy XIV Carbuncle Acrylic Charms. We've got your red, we've got your yellow, we've got your blue. I mean, sure, you could level Arcanist and unlock all of the Carbuncles, or you can send in a $10 donation, have a chance to win all three. I mean, you should level Arcanist anyway, because you get two jobs for the price of one, but, you know, that's just, that's just like my opinion, man. $10 minimum donation. Thank you, E. Watson. Also from E. Watson, also for a $10 minimum donation, we got a fat cat. Final Fantasy XIV, fat cat enamel pin. It's a cat. It's fat. What more do you need? $10 minimum donation. I'll try and hold it so the camera can see it without massive quantities of glare. All right, there we go. Thank you so much. One more from Iwatson. We have, and I should have taken it out of the packaging before the prize segment. This is what happens when I try to do a prize segment before the, co the coffee has kicked in. You know what? We're going to blame it on the Moogles. They are mischievous. There are a bunch of them. We have this Final Fantasy XIV Primog Wooden Charm. This is so cool. It is made of wood. It is, appears to be painted. It has Moogles galore. And for a $10 minimum donation, it is could be yours. So again, gamesdonequick.com slash donate. Please get those in. From S. Claire Studios for a $15 minimum donation, we have a Final Fantasy XIV wall clock. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right camera here. I love the art on this, and we have a collection of Final Fantasy XIV characters. We've got Alphino. We've got Alizé. We've got Ishtala. We've got Minfilia among the crew, where she should be. We've got Graha, we've got Astinian, we've got Emmerich, and this, this is Thancred. $15 minimum donation gets you in to win that. Thank you so much. Again from Pearl Pop for a $15 minimum donation, we have a set 
of Final Fantasy X Perlers, sprite art style of the Final Fantasy X characters, seven in total. There we go, make sure I've got. So we've got, I'm gonna try and remember the names on all of these. We've got Titus, we've got Yuna, we've got Kimari, we've got Lulu, we've got Oren, Waka, and Riku. $15 minimum donation gets you in to win this set of seven. Thank you so much, Pearl Pop. These are so cool. Again, I love Pearl Pop stuff. I'll tell you all week how much I love their stuff because it's really amazing. For a $25 minimum donation, a couple of items, Ted Woods has sent us some original art of Cloud Strife. Black and white, this piece is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Ted, for sending this one in. $25 minimum donation will get you in to win that. Also for a $25 minimum donation from Kaito Ace, we've had him up on the set this week, we have Final Fantasy Creature Cubes. We got a Tonberry. We got a Curl. We got a Chocobo. Which way is up? There we go. And this one is easy to tell which way is up. We got a Moogle. I've been surrounded by Moogles all week, and I'm amazed that things are still going as smoothly as they are, if I am honest. $25 minimum donation. Thank you so much, Kaito Ace, for sending these in. You know I love the cozy friends. Like, really, I do. We also have a prize available today from now through the end of the marathon from Final Fantasy XIV. We have the Endwalker Collector's Edition prize pack. This thing is incredible and not easy to get your hands on. It has... Statuettes of Alphino and Alizé. We have the Panasonic sound set. We have the Endwalker Collector's Edition featuring that amazing Warrior of Light, Paladin, Passage of Arms statue. On behalf of all of my other tank players and to everyone who doesn't play tank, we've got you covered. Promise. $100 donation gets you into win that now through the end of the marathon. And when you send in that $100, you will also be halfway towards getting entered to win our grand prize this event, the Heroic Replicas Grand Prize Pack. Sly Cooper's Cane, Fire Emblem Falchion, The Orb, The Celeste Strawberry Vinyl Sticker, The Mermaid Pendant, The Kinstone. All six of those, single prize pack, $200 cumulative donation. Words are hard this early in the morning, I'm telling you get you in to win that. What does cumulative mean? We're adding up the donations you send in all week. If your personal donation total meets or exceeds $200, you are automatically entered to win. So you've still got a little bit of time to get there, but time is running short and things move fast. It's a speed run marathon. It has to be that way. GamesDoneQuick.com. You can check out the stream there. You can click on the donate link. You can see all of the amazing prizes we have, some of the available bid wars and incentives. We are still looking to get, there's one right there, Super Mario 64 120 star. I'm a little biased on this one because I get to host it later. Coming up a little later today, we're a little over a quarter of the way there. Check out all of the incentives that we have available. When you're submitting your donation, scroll down to the bottom of the page, select the incentive you want, contribute to that. Boom, easy, done. I'm going to be back with you again after this next run to show some of the other prizes that we got available. But for now, I think Shredberg is getting warmed up for Super Meat Boy. I'm looking forward to... Super Meat Boy runs are great because you get to see what the game looks like when you don't die 200 million times. At least, again, that's my experience. So thank you again, everybody. I've been Mr. Game and Shout. I don't want to hold you up any longer. I'll be talking to you a little later anyway. Take care. We'll see you soon. Enjoy the run. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to be back on the mic with you. My name is Happy by Three. And as much as I hate to be the bearer of bad news at the very beginning, the marathon's almost over. But the good news is you can make it even longer by donating for the Metroid Dread Boss Rush, which is currently at $30,000 out of $50,000, or donating for our bonus game, Super Mario 64 120 Star. And we have got a fantastic start toward getting that bonus game with a $13,000 donation from the Yeti. The Yeti says, hey all, Yeti here. What a thrill. We're here, it's the final stretch, and we're so, so, so excited for what's to come today. We're so excited to announce we've officially hit $100,000 raised from our orders of official GDQ collection. 
Just a little piece of info, our collection will be available until midnight CST on Sunday, July 3rd. Be sure to get your order in before then. A portion of every sale directly benefits MSF. A quick favor for the audience, our friend Arcasian has a birthday. Can we get a happy birthday, Anne? Happy birthday, Anne! Thank you so much for that. And with that, I think we are ready to get over to Super Meat Boy with Shredberg.